Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming where thousands of people around the world gather daily to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us we have Dan Blanchard. Dan is a best-selling and award-winning author, speaker and educator and he's going to be having a great conversation with Nancy Guberti. She is a functional medicine specialist, nutritionist and motivational speaker. She is also the founder of Racing Achievers. Before starting with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world and you can help us by subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment on this video or sharing it with someone that you know that is going to benefit of the content that we are talking here today. Also, while we are live streaming, we're going to have the active chat active, of course, <laughs> and that is the screen that you're going to be seeing here on my side or under the video in case that you're following us from a smartphone. Through there, you can interact with us. We want to remind you also that you can collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content, and you can do that by going to our website. On the top, you're going to find the link. It says Collaborate with Mindalia. That link takes you to a form that you can fill out, and our technical team will be getting in contact with you. You can collaborate with Mindalia in English through Mindalia TV English, but you can also do it in Spanish through Mindalia Televisión and Portuguese through Mindalia Televisao. Visit our different channels, subscribe, give us a like and a comment, and go to our Facebook pages and Instagram accounts, because with that, you are not only keeping yourself updated with the amazing information that we share there on a daily basis, but you also help us reach as much people in the planet as possible. I'm not gonna be delaying this any further and I have now the great pleasure of leaving you with Dan and with Nancy Guberti. Guys, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. The screen is yours. Hey Mirna, how are you? Good to see Doing you. Doing great, thank you, yeah. welcome. Thank you, I got great news. I got a, uh, my how to become more successful typical students just came out, looking great. And we got Nancy Guberti here today so looking forward to uh talk with nancy nancy how are you great thank you for having me good good so let me introduce uh you and nancy to our audience uh nancy comes all the way from greenwich connecticut yeah my home state connecticut right very cool and she does some really cool stuff nancy does some uh healthy lifestyle coaching which i can't wait to hear some of her uh tips we can all be a little healthier and she's a speaker, of course. And I find her, her, she's a she's on the board of directors of the Teenage Entrepreneurs, which I find that really interesting because I'm a teacher and I've got like a little bit of that entrepreneurial blood running through my veins. And I try to share that with my students saying that you're going to have to work, you know, you have to be very creative going forward on how you're going to be your professional life, your work life. Why not so? And I love how you said something, Nancy, about um, like your passions throw that into your products, then promote those products and make profits. So I think that's really cool. Your entrepreneurial mindset that you're trying to teach our youth is really cool. And I know I just tipped on the, I just uh, scratched the tip of the iceberg and uh, Mira and I just did the same. So Nancy, why don't you tell our audience here at Mandalia TV a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got to where you are today. Okay, well, thank you again so much for having me. I know my son Mark spoke so highly of you. You've on several summits together and his podcasts and your authors. So it's an honor to be here with you. Uh, so I started out at Goldman Sachs. I was in brokerage for 15 years and I loved it. You know, I had 150 institutional clients. I traveled four days a week throughout the United States. Life was grand. Everything was beautiful. Um, and I was in charge of the e-commerce. I really always loved technology. But back in the day, that's what you did. You know, you went to school to get a degree to work at a corporation. There wasn't really entrepreneurship back then, yeah. where it's more open now. And what what's fascinating about living today in this world is that you could have a full-time job and you could also have entrepreneurship in all these other areas that you have a passion for. And that's a full life, you know? So yeah. When I was at Goldman, um, I had two children and my youngest child got very sick and that was Mark. 
And I was at a crossroads because here I was VP of e-commerce, traveling. I had my dad take care of my kids, so I have to worry about that. And he developed a liver disorder and no doctor could help him. So they were like, oh, his motor skills were bad. He couldn't run. They didn't have any for his future was very bleak. So I went for every specialist looking for answers and they had nothing, you know, nothing short of a miracle and a long journey. He healed. But I had to go get my master's. I had to learn about functional medicine. I took matters into my own hands. I'm a person that doesn't like biology, doesn't like science. I'm numbers. (laughs) So I was just like, oh, my God, what does that do? What's the bile about? And I just put everything together with the studying and my um, husband helped because we found researchers in um, Italy and he could speak, he's German, Greek, and he speaks Spanish. So he was able to get us the information from these researchers with my degrees and really um, trial and error and nothing, you know, Mark progressed. And that's why I'm so proud of him from where he was because the doctors really had no hope. So from that, I then could have went back to brokerage, but I thought this was my calling. God made this happen for a reason. I'm a very, I I am very religious (laughs) and uh, spiritual foundation is really what helped me through the challenge. So I was like, well, I want to help others. So the same testing, functional medicine testing I use for Mark, I use for my own patients. And I've had a private practice for the past 18 years in Greenwich, Connecticut. And I see people everywhere from special needs all the way to cancer, weight loss, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever the issue is. So through that, I learned entrepreneurship. Because when you're in a corporation, you don't have to wear all hats. You don't order your business cards. You don't worry about the print toner. You don't worry about your computer going down, crashing. You call someone to help you. Now you start from scratch. And I basically, I had no clients. I had no idea how to run a practice. Mm -hmm. And from scratch, I turned it into, you know, a, a really nice practice. And then with the help of my sons, they put the technology So even though I first started out as a programmer and worked my way up the technology in corporate, this day and age technology is so different. Oh, yeah, very different. And what a great role model you were for your sons. I mean, that's awesome what you did, how you just kind of recreated yourself. Nancy, that's amazing how you recreated yourself and you were courageous about it. Well, you know what? I just feel like... at. On my deathbed, I wanted to know I tried everything to save my son. And that's all I wanted to know that I did that. And I, so if he didn't heal, at least I didn't feel like I didn't give it my all. So that's why I did. And so many doctors and nurses and people in the medical industry said, don't do it. You're not going to be able to help him, blah, 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 blah. So I try to instill and empower my patients and my clients to say, you can it put your all into it and through those 18 years of looking at clinical research the patterns of mm-hmm. these testing i discovered that most people had nine factors that they needed to work on to live healthy and that ties into even entrepreneurship because cool. with entrepreneurship people are you know the dalai lama said that you mm-hmm. spend the first part of your life going after wealth and yep. then, but at the, at the risk of your health. That's and true. then the second part, you use yep. all that money to try to stay healthy. <laughs> it's a big circle. <laughs> it's a big circle. We don't need to do that. You know, mm-hmm. so like, um, how do we live healthy and how we live healthy? We work on our neurons, you know? Mm-hmm. So like even in entrepreneurship, neurotransmitters, if we go into the medical aspect, neurotransmitters are involved with entrepreneurship. You have dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, ephrine, and excitotoxins. If you're not balancing that out, you can't focus. You talk about your book with the difficult students, difficult, lots of difficult students. What I have seen is, you know, they'll come in and they'll recovering alcoholics or drug addicts. And when we do the testing, they have the same patterns. There's an imbalance of their neurotransmitters 
That's their adrenal system, mm -hmm. fight or flight mode. Absolutely. And then we look at nutritional markers and they're always low in the same nutritional markers. That's and they're right. always eating unhealthy. You know, they're right. not saying, hey, my snack, the food I go to, my comfort food is steamed broccoli with some squeezed yeah. lemon. No, they're going after Doritos or, um, you know, uh, Chinese food or yeah, okay. fat food. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's excitotoxins. And it takes away from the focused neurotransmitters. Yeah. Very fascinating. It's very fascinating. And it proves that whole holistic approach and that educating and that caring for the whole child you know not just one little thing like a standardized test in the educational world one and in the educational world too we think about the senses right so if we if you see a child that can't stay still they need sensory input you know into their skin so there's also an imbalance there that gives them sensory that that they can't feel the same way. Their central nervous system is not working the same way as someone who doesn't have sensory issues. Yeah. So it's yeah. very difficult and it's very hard to diagnose. You know, well, I'm a bit I bad Everyone should be running this test. Pediatricians should yeah. be running the test, but they don't. It's proactive. It's not reactive. <laughs> like American medicine, right? Put a band aid on it. It's, it's so reactive. I remember back a few years ago, I had a student. I had to put like some Velcro. I taped some Velcro under his desk so he could sit there with his fingers and just play with the Velcro because that's what he needed to be able to sit there and just focus. You, you know see, what I'm saying? You're the exception to the academia because the others would be yelling, yelling, yelling. They wouldn't have found something that was thinking out of the box. <laughs> it sure was. And that's one of the, um, and I'd love to jump this conversation a little bit toward like what I do is I'm a teacher, but I'm so like outside the box. You know what I'm saying? I bring in other things, the entrepreneurial spirit which is, um, you know, what you do as well, which is awesome. I bring in the entrepreneurial spirit and I try to teach these kids, you know, it's kind of like Robert Kiyosaki said, you're going to have your job from Rich Dad Poor Dad. You, you know, you're probably going to have a job, nine to five, eight to five, maybe seven to five in the future. It's going to pay your bills. And then on early mornings, hopefully insurance, hopefully, but early mornings, weekends, nights, holidays, summers, whatever, you're going to have your little gig on the side where you bring in entrepreneurial, you build your habits or your, you build your um, hobbies into like your passions and your profits, right? And then you, hopefully, you take some of the skills that you're learning there outside the box and you bring it back into your nine to five job, eight to five, seven to five, whatever it may be. You bring that back in there and you become better at what you're doing there as well. Um, I always preach that. I, I don't know a lot of people in the educational world that are doing that yet, but I see that trend coming. You know, just from what I'm doing, from what I'm seeing, from talking to you, Nancy, I see that trend is coming. You know, the whole entrepreneurial spirit is coming. It's coming, but it's people, it's educators like you, because I will say, so this whole entrepreneurial thing, um, you know, like it didn't have a word 18 years ago, really. It was just like, okay, so you don't want to go back to brokerage, open up your own practice <laughs> and now learn. Right. And then with technology. So one summer, my kids were like, oh, we don't know what to do. And, and honestly, I think they loved school because in the summer I would give them work from nine to 12. So I would always get those bridge books if they were going from yeah. fourth to fifth grade, get the bridge books. Why? If we prepare for a meeting or you prepare by doing a class lesson, mm -hmm. why don't we prepare the kids for next semester, next year? So That's I would so have them work on um, reading comprehension, the math, the science, all the topics, the subjects for three hours. Then they could play. And then they, so they played, it was hot. They were like, oh, what else should we, should we do? I said, write a blog. I was like, you're a Red Sox fan and you live in, you know, you're in New York. You're a yeah. Mets fan. God, you know, that's a hard one too. So sure. I said, write a blog. So they did that. And from that, Mark just, you know, went, Michael went into more the 
he wanted to analyze every athlete, what challenges they overcame because they like LeBron and all of these baseball players, if you look at them, he analyzed the families that they came from and they weren't always very easy families, but here they had a motivation or a mentor and they became amazing with practice and consistency. Mark went into something called Squiddo, which Seth, Seth Godin was part of at one time. And he wrote all these blogs on so many different topics. Then he wrote books. And then I said to him, wow, that's really fascinating. Imagine if kids could learn that or single moms or veterans. So they actually put this teenage entrepreneur program and it was finding your passion. And then from that narrowing down 10 to one, to pick one at the time, because they ran it at Fordham University. So this yeah. is the fifth year. They turned it into a nonprofit, 501c3. Cool. And I got to tell you, the kids that came were hungry. They were first generation college. They were going to go to college. They yep. came in and they wanted to learn. And I loved it. And I must say the girls were really good. <laughs> Some of the guys had focus issues, but yep. the, like you could see the difference. But they were all very serious. And we gave them a dress code, a business attire. Super. And it, it helped with confidence. They had to do presentations, oh, you know, wow. because lots of times kids don't like presenting. Adults don't like presenting. No, they don't. <laughs> so it was, you know, to show them, like you said, to show them there is another way. Like, yes, use something to pay your bills, learn many things. Or even for women who are in corporate world, I tell them, I encourage them, like, if you go into that profession, see how you could then be a freelancer if you have children and you have to stay home. Don't think yeah. you have to give up everything and you can't earn a living. What can you do freelancing? Awesome. You know, so just putting that in, planting the seed now makes a huge difference for the world later. You can't wait till the go to college to learn about yeah. entrepreneurship. I, I so agree with you. It's a mindset, it's a way of thinking. And I love you're out of the box way of thinking. That's how you just totally model that for your, your kids. And um, they've got so many advantages because of that. And that whole bridge thing over the summer, I mean, that made me immediately think about some of the studies that I've read. You know, I'm an inner city school teacher. And some of the studies I've read is that you get a lot of the inner city schools, you know, they get a bad rap. But if you really look at the studies and if you really understand the educational world, you're going to see that the inner city kids the ones that are, you know, the ones that are honestly trying, you know, not, not the ones that are like tuned out, but the ones that are trying, you know, you'll see they learn just as much as any other kid in any other school during the school year. And then what happens is the summer comes and then there becomes like this learning gap because they're losing some of their learning. Whereas in other like areas, affluent areas, or just maybe like people who have that entrepreneurial mindset. You know, they're like telling their kids, well, let's do some enrichment stuff. How about writing a blog? How about, oh, I get this great book I think you'd like to read. You know what I'm saying? How about, how about listening to a few podcasts or whatever? So they got this out of the box thinking, this entrepreneurial mindset, this enrichment way of thinking. You know what I'm saying? And then their kids are like ready for the next grade and hopefully stretched outside of the box a little bit where you get like a lot of the inner city kids they go right back and let's say they've lost a month or two of their education. Now, if you cumulatively put that together, years go by. By the time they're in high school, you know, they've lost a lot by the time they're in high school. So I love your way of thinking, Nancy. I love what you're doing with your kids and that whole mindset and bridging that summer thing. And, oh, it's so cool. I just wish more parents thought like you thought and modeled, you know, courageously modeled it and just did it the way you do it. And another thing that you bring in, I know Mark talks, your son Mark talks a little bit about the healthy lifestyle, you know, being um, efficient, working efficiently and productively, but you can't do that if you don't have the gas in the tank, the energy. And Mark does, your son Mark, he does a wonderful thing that I do, um, the power nap, love that. You know, I do that when I can. That comes back from my old um, athlete days. I used to do that. Very hard for me to do it now, you know, as a uh, teacher and a father of five who's going from one thing to another to another to another. But, um, you know, he got a lot of that from you. 
about putting the gas in the tank through living like a healthy lifestyle and uh, making healthy lifestyle choices. And I know some of that, Nancy, came to you out of necessity. You wanted your, your family and to be healthy. Uh, you were self-taught. Uh, can you like give us a little bit more? I know you already talked a little bit a little bit about it. But can you give us a little bit more of that healthy lifestyle? Yes. So if I touch upon nine different areas that we should look at to incorporate every day, and I always say, don't be overwhelmed. Take one step at a time. But you mentioned mindset. Mindset is for everything. So when people make New Year's resolutions by February, they're no longer doing them because it's fun to make goals. But it's not as much fun to work at it consistently every day. Yeah. So they have to realize they're in it to win it, right? And this is yeah. your life. You have one body. So if you start, and, and the body is resilient, so anyone could really start. The first thing is to remove toxins. And there are mm -hmm. toxins in our food, in our water, in the air. So we can't live in a bubble. But what we can do is choose the healthier choices, eat a balanced meal. If you could go organic or non-GMO, go. There's something called glyphosate, which is a pre-harvest spray that's linked to cancers and developmental disorders. And it's on most crops, unfortunately, and they don't label it. So like Cheerios is the worst food because it has a thousand points per inch of a person's body and yet you see little kids eating it yeah. so go to cascadian farms which is uh, a brand that makes cheerios but organic it doesn't have the spread wow i got That's one that. thing. <laughs> my kids love that honey nut cheerios as long as it's not cheerios get cascadian mm. farms yeah i'm gonna have to That's do that brand you want to switch to because oats is the number one sprayed and now the studies have come out a man just won in the supreme court that he got cancer and um you know he has like two years to live it's a terrible thing yeah. i put it on my facebook business page it's you know whatever's on there yep. is really um science-based so removing the toxins looking at your personal care products because not only what we eat but what we put on our body affects our health and can mm. lead to degenerative diseases so go for things that don't have any dyes or any artificial anything like Gatorade blue. You don't need the blue, you know, get rid of all of the artificial because that also is linked to learning issues and hyperactivity and cancer, you know, so don't shoot the messenger. Um, then, so that's one, the toxins, the food, look at what you eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I always say, get a notebook, write down, keep a journal of what you eat. Cause people will say, oh, I eat healthy. Then when I say, okay, give bring in your journal. They're like, oh my God, I didn't yeah. realize. Like, oh boy. <laughs> like I wrote it all down. This is bad. I'm like, it's a, look, I'm not here to judge. I'm here huh? to empower you. Cool. So then the next thing is water. If you have a choice to drink anything, it should be pure water. It's okay mm -hmm. if you want your coffee or tea, I would say go organic because coffee and tea is highly sprayed with pesticides. Why put the toxin in that's linked to degenerative diseases? Get organic, but drink water. Um, that's really important. I can't tell you people get headaches, people lose their energy. Your eyes have water, your bones have 22% water in them, every part of your body has water, so get water. Then the next thing is sleep. You mentioned power naps. That's great. If you can't do that, make sure you're getting adequate quality sleep somehow. With kids, it's hard. Um, so, you know, do something where you're not really burning your body at both ends. And then supplementation. Yep. I do believe in spe certain supplements. Probiotics is one thing. Yep. Um, Can we back up just for one second to sleep? I've been hearing a lot of mixed studies on sleep. What do, you, what do you suggest for how many hours you, you should shoot for? So everybody, everyone, we're all different, right? We're like snowflakes. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. um, the thing is, if you wake up, say, at 5 o'clock in the morning, you need to go to bed the same day you woke up. When people think they could wake up at five and go to bed at one, you're now up for two days. Yeah, it's like, no. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I like it, that. 
<laughs> it really doesn't work. So I'm like, what day did you wake up? Go mm -hmm. to bed in the same day. And if people say, well, I get energy at night. Well, that's their adrenal system in balance. And that goes back to the neurotransmitters. Your body is giving you signs. So if you could get, I mean, if you could get seven hours sleep, great. You know, some people can't sleep past seven hours. They get too it reverses on them. Some people need at least six hours. So this is where you listen to your body. Mm. Now, if you're eating healthy, you don't need, you usually don't need 10 hours sleep if you're eating healthy. If you're eating sugars and simple carbs, you're always tired and you always feel like you need sleep. And then if yeah. you stay up to, from one day to the next day, you're always behind the eight ball. Yeah. So try to go, always go to bed before midnight if you can. Yes, 100%. And that means shutting off any electronics, the blue lights, two hours prior. It means yeah. not eating a heavy meal two hours prior. So start like, you know, getting down and relaxing at 10 mm. o'clock if you want to go to bed at 12. I mean, I would say aim to go to bed an hour earlier every night, you oh, know, so it doesn't right. have to be like all or nothing. And yeah. if you don't do it one day, don't beat yourself up. Try again. I always say, pull up your bootstraps and go again. You know, like don't to me. beat yourself up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be flexible. Um, and then another, another really important factor of living a healthy lifestyle is mindset. If you think you can, you will do something. But if you already are, you know, are defeated, what are you saying to yourself? What's your talk? Do you doubt? Do you fear? And why? What is the worst thing that could happen if you tried? You know, so that's what I always tell people. What is the worst thing? I don't care if it's a business or a personal thing. What's the worst thing that could yeah. happen? You might surprise yourself. Yeah. And then you might really be amazed. So the mindset, yeah. and if you have, I think most most human beings have a negative mindset to oh, yeah. some degree. No so doubt. listen to whatever empowers you. For me, I like listening to this guy, Joel Olstein. He's the smiling minister. Oh, yeah. um, I like reading oh, quotes yeah. every morning. Yeah, whatever it is that you need. Some people need to work out. I know one of my sons loves doing his yoga and meditating. He loves that. That puts him in the right zone. Whatever it takes. Mark loves to run. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Whatever it is for you, yep. that's what you need to do. Meditate, prayer, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then be a uh, stress reduction. So you could be eating organic, drinking water, sleeping nine hours. But if you're stressed out, yeah. that's going to shut down digestion. Stress kills. So what do you, we all have stress, right? You have five mm -hmm. kids. We all have yeah. stress. Yep. <laughs> no doubt. But what do you do? So how does one react to stress shows their true character? Yeah. Are you going to get angry? Mm -hmm. Are you going to get violent? Are you, you know, now we look at what happens in dysfunctionality, right? So mental mm -hmm. health. So what can you do instead? And there's a lot of things. There's like an mm -hmm. EFT. There's a, some people love emotional freedom technique where they tap on certain parts of their bodies. Some people mm -hmm. love to do some exercise, like go run, go ride yeah. a bike. Don't yeah, I always love doing that. Do something to deal with your stress. So we need that. And then the last thing is be, um, be your own best advocate. Uh, you want to like be that. your advocate, not only for your health, Mm -hmm. And that means when you go to the doctor, get a copy of your test results. Very few people ask for the test results. Mm -hmm. You are your own advocate. That's one. Ask questions. But yep. be a consumer, savvy consumer. With everything you buy, why are you buying it? Who are you mm -hmm. paying? What company are you paying into? Are they a good company? Are they putting this glyphosate into everybody's body? Um, before mm -hmm. you eat anything, be mindful. Like, what is it that I need from this food? You know, so if it's a donut and I want to lose weight and I know that's going to go to my hips, my butt, all my bad parts, <laughs> yeah. um, why am I choosing it? Why mm. do I feel Gosh. less worthy? So mm. be mindful in every aspect of your life. Oh, I love that. Being cognizant, mindful, paying attention and realizing <clears throat> everything you do has some kind of consequence, positive 100%. or negative. So which way do you want to go? You know what I'm saying? I love that stuff. So, um, so Nancy, 
are you working on anything new? I mean, you do so many things. You have any new projects you're working on or anything you're thinking about working on? So I'm finishing up since Mark is such a, he loves to write and I'm finishing up my book, which is called healthy living every day. It's a 365 day book. So every day I talk about cool. a health and then I talk about health topics, um, eating, and then a mindset that's 365. And then the next book is raising achievers, which talks all about, the four pillars that I believe are involved with raising achievers and ties in with that teenage entrepreneur and what Mark and Michael are doing with their nonprofit. Oh, that's <laughs> so that is the, besides running the practice. And then I love to go to like when Mark and Michael are icons or <laughs> asked to go to new media summits or national publicity, uh -huh. we all travel together. <laughs> so, oh, that is so cool. We support yeah. each other. <laughs> You're doing such a great job with the boys. I don't know Michael that well, but I know Mark pretty well. And like I brag about him to my wife and my oh. friends. I'm like, he's such an amazing young man. And, um, you know, it's pretty obvious why he has an amazing mom, courageously amazing mom uh, that's just setting the role model, setting the bar up high, leading by example. So um, it doesn't surprise me that he's an amazing young man. I'm sure Michael is too. And I love that you guys travel together, stay together, stick together, work together, you know, and you're thinking, breathing, eating, sleeping, all like successful habits, successful way of life, which is like a really, really cool thing. So um, thank you guys. Your family's a great role model. Tell the families out there, you guys are laying a great example. You love other families to be able to try to follow in your footsteps. And um, I know we're going to get closing up pretty soon on this, but uh, Nancy, is there anything like I haven't asked you yet? that I should have asked you before Mirna comes back on and closes us out and gets your contact info? I would love to know from a teacher's standpoint, when, you know, so it's so hard, like how many kids do you have in a class? Well, up until this year, teaching in the inner city high school, I always had about 33 kids ah. in my classroom and they were elbow to elbow. But this year I moved to the a, an alternative school where a lot of the kids have had like been kicked out or expelled from the regular schools. So there you're looking at like 10 to 15 kids in a classroom, which is probably equivalent to like 35. <laughs> you know? And yeah. how do you get to their mindset? Well, it's not easy. But one of the things you got to do is you got to really work on building relationships with them. And, and leading by example and sharing like your life with them. I'm like, you can't just be there for the three R's of like, you know, reading, writing and arithmetic. You also got to be there for the fourth R of relationships mm -hmm. and share your life with them. So like my students, they know I do podcasts. They know I do TV shows. My books are hanging around the room. They know I'm an author. You know what I'm saying? They know I'm a speaker. So they know I do all these things and they look at me like, wow, you ain't like the other teachers. You know what I'm saying? So I'm leading by example, sort of like this, like you are, Nancy, with your family and how your family is for other families. You know what I'm saying? Like you're leading by example. You want to inspire. And that's what I've always called the leadership style that I always aspire to is the inspirational leadership. And then that kind of sets the mindset, you know what I'm saying? And I spend time talking to them on personal development and leadership, you know, and the mindset. I'm always talking to them on those sort of things. And when I talk about Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, you know, Gandhi, I talk to them about courageousness, you know, and I talk to them about leadership skills. And I talk to them about all those other human traits and human qualities that made those people who they are. And why can't we just follow in their footsteps? Right. It all comes down to love. Like there's so much mm -hmm. uh, resistance and sides, uh, this side and that side against this one and that one. And I'm like, this religion against that. I'm mm -hmm. like, it really is supposed to be all about love. Yeah. Like, all, like I'm like, I don't care what color you are. I don't care what you do. We all bleed the same blood. I'm like, mm -hmm. we all have a heart. We all want to be loved. And so I asked you that question because I noticed when the kids come in the first day on this program that the, Michael and Mark run, they're tough. 
Like sometimes yeah. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> and by the yeah. end, you see that I think what happens is they they just so inside, they keep their eyes down. And then when they see, wow, these are two kids like my age spending time with me, they believe in me. No one believes in them. Mm -hmm. Very few people believe in them or they come from yeah. really hard families. Yeah, when they, they've gotten very, very good at pushing people away. Yes, and but when they in there. That you're into as a teacher, you're the role model, and you are interested in them. That's going to change their life forever. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for asking me that question. That was a great question. Well, thank, thank you. you. I love what you do as well. Mark speaks so highly of you. <laughs> well, tell him I said thank you. So, Mirna, I'm thinking you're probably there somewhere, getting ready to close this out. Yes, I'm right here. And again, thank you for allowing Mindalia to be in a channel for your knowledge. Thank you for sharing your time and your wisdom with us. We want to ask you before leaving, Nancy, where can our audience find you? So my uh, website is Nancy Guberti. That's G-U-B is in boy, E-R-T-I dot com. And if you want to look at my kids, that's Mark Guberti. He's with a C and Michael Guberti. And then there's also RaisingAchievers.com. And if you have any questions, anyone listening, just email me. I'd be more than happy to answer it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dan, where can our audience find you? Okay. Thank you, Miriam. They can find me all over. <laughs> I'm all over social media. Just Google Dan Blanchard, author, speaker, teacher, educator, whatever. I'm there. DanBlanchard.net, Grand96.com. Be sure to check me out on Amazon under Dan Blanchard, Daniel Blanchard. You'll see me. I'm there. Thank you, Myrna. And <laughs> thank, thank you, Nancy, for an awesome show. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. To our audience, thank you for the sharing time with us as well. And we want to remind you that you can collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content. You can do it going to our website. You're going to find a link that says collaborate with Mindalia. That link takes you to a form that you can fill out and our technical team can get in contact with you and you can do your collaboration in English, but you can also do it in Portuguese through Mindalia Televisao in Spanish through Mindalia Televisión. Visit our different channels, subscribe, leave us a like and a comment and share this information with anybody that you think that can benefit of the content that we talk in Mindalia. You can also visit Facebook pages and Instagram accounts. And by following us, you are not only helping us reach as much people in the planet as possible, but you also keep yourself updated with the amazing information that we share there on a daily basis. Once again, thank you from our heart. And until next time, bye. Bye.